to go up the edge of the runway. Ah. What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Flyland Guy. And I am back and mildly frustrated <laughs> with another <laughs> with another sorry audio thunder video. Um if you saw the uh intro clip to this video, then you'd know exactly why I'm frustrated. Alright, so let's go through this again. I am uh, doing a flight today, we are we are in uh, Stewart International uh, Airport in New York, and uh, as I stated before, I wanted to do a flight to Canada, flight to Canada, uh, as part as the next stop in my uh, North American tour. So, unfortunately, due to the bad luck of on air's job management system uh the only really real job that i could take was to uh newfoundland canada now if you don't know anything about newfoundland you're probably you're probably asking yourself what's the issue problem is that newfoundland is about a three and a half hour flight from here uh in the king era so needless to say i have a lot of time to think about how I should have gotten this right the first time ahead of me. So, uh, we're redoing this flight again now. Um, and hopefully things will turn out better the second time around. Um, I realize that uh, icy runways and the brakes on the King Air don't work out too well. It looks like I had to really use reverse thrust. So, I'm going to try things again and we'll see how it goes this time. All right. Um, let's just hop into the cockpit now and let's take a quick look at our flight plan for today. Yes, low battery voltage. I know, I know, I know. So our flight plan from today is taking us right here from uh, Stewart International, New York. And we're going to be going uh, east northeast along the coast of Maine, basically. So we're going to be coming up through... Uh, I guess New York, I don't really know kind of what's around here, but I know this is Maine along here. We're going to pass through over uh, New Brunswick in Canada, and then we're going to cross uh, Charlottetown, uh, Prince Edward Island. So from there, we're going to make a right turn, and we're going to head east over the northern end of Nova Scotia, so this is like Cape Breton, and we're going to be crossing over Sydney, Nova Scotia. And from Sydney, Nova Scotia, we'll be making that turn back uh, northeast again. And we're going to head towards Gander International in Newfoundland. Now, in terms of the weather, let's just take a quick look at the the weather in Gander. Um, well, one of the reasons why I wanted to try this flight again is um, mainly because it looks like uh, the weather is going to get horrible tomorrow. And um, this job that I'm doing is only going to be around for another day or so. So I don't want to risk waiting too long to start it, to start it again. So... We're going to get things started. Everything's already plugged in. Uh, we are going to be going up to 30,000 today in the King Air. Um, my previous flight, we were given a step climb of 25,000 to 27,000 and ended up spending about half the flight in the clouds. So 
Um, hopefully this time around we'll be able to get up and over the clouds. It looks like the weather here in New York is also kind of going down the tubes as well. Um, so it's best if we kind of get up and going as quickly as possible. 30,000 is locked into our flight director. We already have 30,000 feet uh, dialed in the cabin pressure. Uh, we can go ahead and turn on our emergency lights as well. Props already out of feather, so we are good to go for engine start. So, beacons on. And let's get our... Let's start the left engine today, left, igni left ignition on. And let's start the left engine. Flight will be monitored until you land and shut down the engines. Yeah, this is the second time I've experienced a braking issue in the King Air. I don't know if this is related to the last update, but I haven't really experienced this before leading up to now. Um, but it seems like I'm having a hell of a time trying to stop the plane now. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing in our next landing is I'm going to be using a reverse thrust to see if I could slow it down enough to get the brakes uh, active or, or to actually make the brakes work or make them effective. Left engine started. We'll go ahead and get the right engine started up. Looks like there's some snow moving into uh, moving into New York. Well, in this region of New York. Second engine started up, looks good. We're going to turn the alternators on. Ignition's off. Starter's off. And Pito Heat can come on. So even given runway 27 here at Student International to take off. So I will be looking at the map for that to see where we need to go. Okay. Hmm. All right, just give me one second here. Just having an issue connecting to uh, Navigraph. So, I'm just gonna try. I'm gonna try and restart in Simlink to see if that makes a difference. Boom, we're connected. Okay, so we are starting here off in this uh, restricted ramp area. And we're taking off runway 27, so pretty much just going to be a quick right turn. Another right turn, a left turn, and we'll be able to line up for takeoff. Alright, so I'm going to start, I'm going to switch the taxi lights on. And logo lights on as well um, parking brake is off
flaps down to approach and let's head out. This is one of the reasons why I was very nervous about flying out uh, or heading up north during the winter. up here at runway 27. Another interesting thing I found out is that oops, park and brake on. Yeah, another interesting I found interesting thing I found out is that my brake, well the trigger button which I use for the brake on the uh, gladiator uh, NXT joystick. It's actually a double. It's a double button. Like you, you could press down halfway and then press it down all the way. So I need to make sure I really squeeze the trigger for the brakes to kick in. All right, we are ready to go. I'm gonna go turn the landing lights on. Strobes on. Uh, prop RPMs to 100%. Looking forward to getting up and over these clouds. Like the weather's really changed a lot since I was last here. We all lined up. And we think we're good to go for takeoff. Airborne time log. Gear up. Just trying to trim it out. The flaps up. Your damper on, autopilot, nav. All right. So we've got some ice forming already on the uh, windows. So just turn the window anti-icing on so that should clear that up.
There's a lot of ice forming <laughs> super fast. This is one of the cool tricks that I learned here. Um, if you're getting ice forming up on the wings and stuff in the King Air, if you hit the uh, surface de-ice, just keep tapping the manual button every so often, it'll clear it off. So that'll help to keep your performance in check. So it looks like it's going to be a pretty bumpy flight out. Um, but hopefully we'll be getting up and over the clouds uh, sometime soon. Yeah, just trying to keep the ice off uh, from building up too much in the wings. So we're going to be crossing 10,000 feet soon, so the uh, landing lights will come off. clouds sometime soon. I always forget to set the timer. I'll just start it now. I just want to get a, give a, get a good feel for how long we've been in the air for. And 
this is a rough takeoff here, bro. A rough climb. So when we get out, oh, that's not good. Just lost a bunch of altitude just now. Hopefully, if we can get up and above these clouds, uh, we will we we'll have a quick discussion about uh, the weather in Gander right now, Newfoundland. And then once we're done with that, we're going to go for a short break. And then uh, we'll be back in a little bit after that. But for now, let's just get out these clouds. Which are very, very, very thick. I forgot to do the weather report for Stewart International before we took off. not too good right now. Ceiling was only at 2,000 feet. So clouds are pretty thick in the area right now. Definitely not this bad. But we were for sure, the ceiling was a lot higher when we left. Um, cloud ceiling. But we were definitely stuck in this, uh, these clouds for quite a while. But we're doing a straight climb out today, so hopefully we'll be breaking through the top of these clouds soon at around if it's similar to last time, maybe at around like 25, 26,000 feet, we should be breaking through the, through the top of the clouds. down a bit on this climb for sure. Um, let me try applying a little more power.
So I feel like we're struggling to get like a good climb rate right now. This is a little slow for for one. Well, this rate of climb is not good for like 170 knots. Crossing 18,000 now. So we'll go to standard. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing to see outside right now. It's not pretty bad right now. It looks to be getting a little lighter outside, so I'm hoping for a bit of a reprieve. Um, should be reaching this upper cloudlet. There we go. Perfect. 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 Awesome. That should help with some of the icing. to struggle through but at least we could see some blue sky now so yeah, this is really funny because in the first flight that I did we actually there was actually no ice on the plane for the whole trip from New York pretty much all the way to Uganda. I think we had some like light ice on the windows, but that was about it. But this time around, jeez. We are an ice cube. <laughs> Crossing 24,000. So, 
as I said, as I said, we should be nearing that that top layer of claws really soon. So normally I'd kind of sit back and relax a little bit as we're climbing out, but I'm just sort of nursing things right now. Um, I want to keep a diligent eye on what's going on until we're kind of in the clear. And if we don't get out of the clouds by 30,000 feet, uh, we're probably going to go up a little higher, maybe, maybe 32. But we should be we should be near the top of the clouds. Looking good now. Here we go, finally. Finally got out of this mess at almost 28,000 feet. So I'm super happy about that. Should help us to get rid of some of that excess ice a little bit. thousand feet to go. Now we're finally leveling off. Um, that was a bit of a rough, a rough climb. A little more rough than I'm used to. Okay, so let's just have a quick chat about the weather. Uganda. So right now we have uh, so winds are out of uh, two three zero nine knots. 
Um, visibility is almost 18 nautical miles, which is good. Um, and temperature is minus 9, altimeter 2988. So the ceiling is 24,000 feet, so things should be pretty good uh, once we start descending into into Newfoundland. Yeah, that's a bit of a it's gonna be a bit of a bumpy flight for a while. Um, I know on my last flight things kind of cleared up around for the most part pretty much once we were nearing Canada that's when uh, the sky kind of cleared up so I'm hoping something similar happens now a lot of bumps going on there <laughs> all right so now that we've reached cruise, uh, I think this would be a good time to uh, just take a little break. Um, I will come back once we are near, or well, once we're over Canada pretty much. So um, right now we're just going to be traveling along the east coast of the United States. Um, and I think this stretch of route right here is about probably close to three three or four hundred nautical miles so the border for the united states and canada is right here so once we kind of cross that border and we're heading towards uh pei i'll come back with a bit of an update and uh, outside of that i'm just going to go and rest my nerves for a little bit and mentally prepare for the landing that we're going to have to do in Newfoundland. I do not want to mess it up again. All right. Take care, everybody. Um, I'll be back shortly and I'll see you then. So welcome back everyone, uh, we are currently still at our cruising altitude of 30,000 feet, um, which has kind of put us at the, the very tippy tops of the clouds. Unfortunately from time to time we still are going through a patch of clouds, so um, I'm still keeping an eye on the icing that's going on. but. In the meantime, we're still uh, getting through, slowly but surely. So, currently we are uh, right above Prince Edward Island, um, which is in eastern Canada. So, we are, we are officially in Canada now. And we are heading east now towards Sydney, Nova Scotia, which is our, our next waypoint. And we'll be crossing over uh, the northern northern tip of Nova Scotia, uh, and Cape Breton as well. So everything is going all right so far. Um, I am still very very worried about what's going to happen when it's time to descend and land. But you know, one thing at a time. We're going to go ahead and just take a quick peep at the weather right now. Uh, the weather in Gander, it is. Uh, so right now we're looking at winds uh, out of roughly the west still, kind of the, the southwest, from uh, at nine knots. Um, no gusts right now, so wind isn't too, too bad. Um, still have really good visibility, uh, about 20 miles, and temperature is currently minus eight, minus eight with the uh, the altimeter to 9.87. Uh, the ceilings are 12,000 feet, so kind of once we get down to our um, final approach fix or, or initial approach fix as well, uh, which is 2,100 feet, should be fairly clear. Um, 
speaking of that, let's go ahead and take a quick look at our approach for today. Uh, I'm just going to bring things up here in uh, Navigraph. So, Simbrief has given us an approach today of uh, runway 31. Um, the, the winds look fairly favorable for that as well. We're going to probably have a bit of a crosswind coming from the left um, since right now we're at uh, the winds are coming out of 250 but for the most part this should work uh, so we're going to be approaching from the south so we'll be using the Arpus waypoint as our initial approach fix and I think this is an RNAV approach yes so RNAV approach for runway 31 and that's the only one that's available so let's go ahead and let's just load this approach up we'll go procedures go approach uh, RNAV 31 Airpress transition we'll go ahead and load that So right now that has us doing like a weird little loop-de-loop -loop thing, but uh, that's fine. Um, this is the, I guess the YQX VOR for the airport. Um, it's not an issue. I'd like to try and delete that waypoint, to be honest, but um, definitely had some issues with deleting this waypoint for some reason, so I don't necessarily want to do that right now. Um, gonna probably start our descent roughly, I'm um, looking at probably 80, 90 nautical miles outside of, uh, well, 80 to 90 nautical miles from Erpris. Uh, which means we'll do 90 that will kind of round things off which means uh, we'll start our descent 80 nautical miles from YQX and then it's another 10 nautical miles to Erpus if we just plug that into our precision calculator and this time we're coming from 30,000 feet down to 2100 which we have to be at at Erpus at, at 220 knots which is around about our descent speed we're looking at about 1500 feet per minute so that's not too bad we might start the descent a little bit earlier just so we can kind of get down and get prepared for the landing uh, but this will do for now all right so looks like we have Nova Scotia coming up in front of us let's back up a little bit yep. so it's about uh, roughly 80 nautical miles until we hit uh, Sydney Nova Scotia so what I'll do is uh, when we start a descent into uh, Gander, um, I'll come back then and we'll just kind of stay until we land. Uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> Hopefully it'll go, it'll go all right this time. It looks like I'm going to need to use the um, reverse thrust to really slow the plane down because apparently using your brakes on the snowy runway just does not work so I've programmed a button on my joystick to make uh, reverse thrust easy to activate and uh, I'm just gonna have to be calm and remember how to use it 
It's sort of weird. Um, toggling reverse thrust doesn't automatically um, doesn't automatically pull your thrusters back to uh, kind of full reverse thrust, which would be good. It sort of just puts you into reverse thrust mode. If that makes sense. And then you have to push your throttle forward to move it back uh, to full reverse thrust. So I'm going to try and do that in one smooth motion if I can. But uh, I don't want to repeat this fight again. <laughs> okay. So I'll be back when we start our descent. And uh, just hang in there in the meantime. All right. This is Boy Fly Island Guy. I'll be back. Take care. How's everyone doing? We are back. We start our descent into um, Gander and uh, we are now heading down, or we're, we're coming down from 30,000 feet. We're heading down to 2100. Um, if we just look at our approach. This, we're heading to this Arpus Waypoint uh, after, so we're actually heading towards uh, this YQX VOR and then we're actually going to kind of come out and do a loop and come back to this Arpus, Arpus Waypoint right here. And uh, so we could, I can show you that. This is pretty much what we're doing right now. Um, so we're getting down to 2100. I am super nervous right now. And so I made sure, I don't know if I mentioned this just now, but I made sure to set up reverse thrust on my, joyst on my joystick, have a, a key assigned to it. So as soon as our main gear hits the ground, we are going to deploy, or well, we're going to uh, set reverse thrust, and let's see if we can get this plane stopped. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to do the trick. Um, after I crashed last time, <laughs> I tested it out, and it looks like that's what's going to slow things down, so... We'll see how things go. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at right now. Also have a significant amount of ice buildup. Uh, so I'm trying right now to um, use the surface de ice every once in a while just to just to clear up some of the ice, especially on the wings. I do not want to stall on landing, which is something that I've also seen every now and then when, I, when I'm coming in uh, for landing with, with some ice on the king here. So, just going to double check the weather one more time in Gander. And, uh, Wind is coming out of 240 now, 12 knots. Uh, still got great visibility. Well, you can see that overall right now. And uh, temperature is minus 8. Ceiling's 23,000 feet. We're well below that now. Ultimate 29 or 8. eight. All right, now, and our ultimate matches in the sim, so that's good. Get near 10,000 feet, we are going to uh, switch on our landing lights. And we're going to see <laughs> if we can land this puppy with no issues. 
there is a definite problem right now with um, snow on the runways. Um, you can, a lot of some of these runways are just like basically snow covered. You can't even see them, um, which is sort of weird. They should be cleared off to a degree. And uh, I think that is what is ruining uh, some of these landings. Like when I crashed the first time, it was essentially because I had no brakes when I landed. The plane just slid along the runway for like three or 4,000 feet at 90 knots, despite the fact that I had the, the brakes pressed. So hoping this, uh, this reverse thrust does the trick. Twenty six nautical miles outside of the YQX uh, VOR. I basically started my descent uh, eighty nautical miles out from the VOR and then calculated for an extra ten uh, an extra ten nautical miles to the initial approach fix so we should get down there in time uh, there shouldn't be any issues with that and as I said I'm just hoping some of this ice comes off the comes off the engine and the wings uh, the wings look okay right now Let's see how it looks outside Looks like it's cleared off a little bit. Alright, so we're at 11,000 feet, 1,000 feet to go uh, before our landing lights come on. We're now uh, 20 nautical miles up. I just want to thank all of you for bearing with me, uh, well, those of you who've watched so far. Um, I am trying to do something a little different uh, with the channel now, um, well, more so in terms of the editing style. So I'm trying to start off the videos now with like kind of an interesting, an interesting tidbit from the flight to make it a little more interesting and kind of draw people in a little bit. Crossed 10,000. Right. So we've been flying right now for about uh, roughly two hours and forty minutes. So I could imagine it's going to be probably another maybe 15 or 20 until we land. I think Simbrief gave us a flight time today of 3 hours and 9 minutes. Uh, 3 hours and 10 minutes. So it looks like we're going to probably be about spot on with that. Heading up now to 11 nautical miles to the YQX VOR and we should see the runway, yep, yeah, it's directly ahead of us, oh sorry, the airport's directly ahead of us, just seeing it, it's right there. So this is the runway that we're landing on right here. 3-1, so we're actually going to 
kind of loop out and come back and land on that runway. At least I think that's the one. Yeah, it should be. So you better not fail me now. <laughs> All right. So, once again, getting a little closer to the ground. It's looking beautiful. We could start to really see those snow-covered trees. And we do not want to get a close-up of them like we did last time. my personal self here, I'm just going to pull up the airport uh, going to pull up the airport oh no I have a feeling I wonder if there's notifications I'm getting out for for on air. That would suck if that's the case. If on air goes into maintenance mode while I'm landing, I'm going to be pissed. I didn't even read what it said either. So I might just try to get it down on the runway as fast as possible. So we are passing the airport on our left. beautiful uh, frozen lake that we're flying over right now. Alright, so we've hit 2100 feet. Landing gear. So I'm just going to slow down and drop the first notch of flaps. Which I believe we could do at 202 knots. Yep, first flap 202. Still gonna try and work on this ice a little bit. drop the landing gear now just to kind of slow down a little more.
I'm going to turn on approach mode just so that we have that activated. Um, it's a little early for it, but, you know, might as well be prepared like a good boy scout. Okay. fully configured now. Flaps full. Gear down. So I was really worried about testing out the limits of the fuel capacity for the King Air. Um, so I loaded up about close to 1,200 pounds of fuel, 1,200 gallons of fuel, I believe. Um, sorry, no, I loaded up enough fuel for 1,200 nautical miles. And I think the, the maximum is like 1,300. And this trip is probably uh, maybe just over a thousand, so it's a little, cutting it a little close. Okay, crossing over Erpus now, which is the initial approach fix. Alright, looks like all the ice is cleared off the wing, which is good. to full. And in a few nautical miles we'll be making the left turn onto final. Trying to maintain around 120 knots right now. Don't really want to go too much faster than that. We should be starting our left turn soon. On to final.
Okay, got 10 minutes to get this plane down. Of course, I timed this landing to... So right now, I might just stop and get it off the runway and turn the engine off. Just so I could... end the flight. before the schedule ma schedule maintenance happens. Waiting for the glide path to kick in. to get the plane down on the ground. Don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. Oh, God, why? Push this and see if I can if I can get this plane down in time. Oh, man. I don't think it's gonna happen though. the clock and trying not to crash at the same time. I don't I don't know if this is gonna work. So essentially you register the flight once you're able to land the plane and shut off the engine. So I may just do a stop on the runway. <laughs> Schedule maintenance in five minutes. So that means we're going to have three minutes to land the plane, bring it to. 
to a full stop and shut the engine off. Queen 270 at 16 knots. Take over, auto pot it off, your damper off. So I basically got my finger ready for the reverse thrust. Looks like it's working. Get off this runway real quick. I'm just going to stop here. And I just want to end this flight really fast. Got like less than two minutes. Landing lights off. Engine off time log. Flight is finished. It has been monitored by on air. Yes. All right. Whew. All right, so I was able to end the flight before the scheduled maintenance. That's all I really wanted. All right. So, don't do this normally. <laughs> I literally just tossed the plane in the middle of the airport somewhere, uh, but I can't even really tell where any of the the uh, taxiways are or anything because the whole airport is just covered in snow. So, Whew. all right, so we landed safely, and uh, that's all that matters right now. Uh, I'm gonna turn the avionics off. And that is it, folks. Thank you very, very much for joining me for this flight. I'm sorry that I had to, I had to kind of rush into it, um, but yeah, 
got it done. That's a uh, yeah. That landing issue is weird. So we didn't even pull our flaps up. <laughs> yeah, that landing issue is pretty weird. Um, not being able to break it all. Is, it's you shouldn't have to keep your reverse thrusters on until pretty much the plane is stopping for for you to actually use them. Don't know what's going on with that, but anyway, we survived the landing this time. That's what's important, and. Um, We'll carry on our North American tour next time. Uh, so we'll be leaving from here. And either we'll be heading over to um, somewhere in East Coast Canada still, or we'll go back into the Northeast United States. All right? So that's it from your boy, Flyland Guy. I appreciate it. Thank you for being with me. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one, all right? Peace.